Well, hello, hello, everyone. Good morning, good evening, good night to people joining from all over the world. My name is Brenda Belmares, and I'm CEO for Speedy Connections, and I'm very happy for you joining in on this conversation today. Uh, this panel discussion about women in entrepreneurship is a team effort brought to you by two companies who believe in women power, Arbalest Learning and Speedy Connections. And I'm the lucky one who gets to interview this brilliant group of ladies. I wanna tell you that we will have a 45 minute discussion followed by 15 to 20 minutes of questions and answers. During the discussion, you can type your questions in the chat. And if you please have any specific questions for a specific lady, just write her name in the bracket. After the panel, also we have a networking event where you can use the social, the social lounge, uh, the feature that's here in Aramid, and meet a lot of people on virtual tables. So feel free to stay after the panel and interact with others. And without further ado, let me briefly introduce each one of these lovely ladies. Uh, we have with us Marieke Pichler, uh, who is founder of Brand Density, and she's joining in from uh, Amsterdam. Uh, we have Dr. Hina Shah, who is the founder and director for ICECD, and she will explain in further um, as we go along. And we also have Bree Sealing, who is the entrepreneur coach and number one entrepreneur coach by Google, right, Ree? So uh, let's meet all these lovely ladies and please tell us a little bit more about yourself and your journey as an entrepreneur. So Brie, can we start with you? Absolutely, hello and good morning. Super excited to be here, first of all. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I am an entrepreneur coach, so I've been an entrepreneur for 14 years, and in those 14 years have seen pretty much all the ups and the downs and the bumps and the bruises that come with entrepreneurship, and kind of real journey, quote unquote, better, and uh, want to help others basically Um, in my process, I don't know what's going on. Is anyone, is everyone else seeing all this? Um, yeah, something happened. Apparently we got a bit disconnected. Okay. I think yeah, I'm sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure I don't, I don't want anyone to miss anything. So Sure, sure. No, um, go ahead. So yeah, so what I do basically is help everyone through, help entrepreneurs through every stage of their journey. So I help people start businesses to, you know, become from entrepreneur into solopreneur. I help people who are solopreneurs become entrepreneurs, building teams and systems and strategies. And then I also help entrepreneurs build their legacies. And one of the, two of the things that are really important to my method of teaching is one, entrepreneurship is an inside out experience and also that there is no one size fits all model for a successful business. So all of the growth strategy that I do with entrepreneurs is tailor-made to their business, their vision, their values, their lifestyle, their zone of genius. Um, and I take all of that into account when helping them develop what that path forward looks like for them. Nice, that's an amazing story. We wanna hear more about that. Just. Hold on a second. Dr. Hina, can you tell us a little bit about all these fabulous things you do for entrepreneur women? Hi, everybody. It's good morning for those in the morning. Good afternoon for those who are uh, uh, sitting after lunch. And good evening <laughs> those who are uh, finished their evening tea. I have finished my dinner also. So you can imagine what time it is. Uh, <laughs> it's a great platform. It's a great pleasure to talk on this platform. Uh, women power, yes, everybody has now understood that what women power is and a few men are getting frightened that very soon they have to organize the session for men's power. So we wait <laughs> for this. Uh, I have been an entrepreneur. I, I got married and then I started my enterprise. Uh, I, I did my master's in science. And always I wanted to go and teach in the school or college. I never thought I'll ever become an entrepreneur. But the opportunity and environment gave me the, the reason to become an entrepreneur. And I started my plastic packaging factory uh, industry, which uh, uh, the product was um, 
for the textile mills. It's a packaging material for the textiles. And uh, I had learned my entrepreneurial capabilities in during this period and uh, develop entrepreneurship in me in such a way that I learned that how to become successful being a woman. In India, it's a very traditional country. Our culture, our education system, and our socialization pattern doesn't uh, ask you to become an entrepreneur. They, our social culture, social structure, socialization pattern, university and school says, study, study, and get the get best of the job. And that's it. And that is the ultimate, ultimate, uh, what do you say, the goal. If you don't get good job in India, go to Australia. You don't get there, go to America. If you don't get there, go to Netherlands, wherever you want to go, but get the best of the job. In such situation, becoming an entrepreneur was a, was a very difficult time. But once I became successful, I realized that I suffered as before, as, as, an, as a human, as a human woman. And while becoming entrepreneur, I suffered psychologically, I suffered uh, emotionally, and I suffered intellectually. So I decided that I don't want other women to suffer like that. Might as well make them entrepreneurs and begin the women entrepreneurship in India in 80s, early 80s. And that is the beginning. And today, I have directly developed more than 200,000 women in India wow. and uh, replicated this experience in uh, Asian, African, Caribbean and Pacific countries. So this is my background and uh, still uh, my journey is to make sure that uh, all women think to become an entrepreneur so they can really experience the economic empowerment. That is my background. Wow, thank you for sharing that. It's such an honor. Like, imagine all the lives you have touched. That is so powerful. So thank you for sharing. Thank you. Marieke, can you tell us, please? Uh, yes, of course. Um, well, to start with, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And um, I think this is a really good initiative. Um, I started my journey, my entrepreneurial journey, only four years ago. Um, let me tell you something more about my journey. I was 17 years old when I had to choose a study. And I studied uh, pedagogy. I started the study in pedagogy because I had actually no clue what I was good at. Um, and I thought something with kids that can be that difficult so let me just choose pedagogy pedagogy so that's what i did uh, i turned about uh i turned out to be pretty good at it um after that i graduated started to study pedagogical science um after which some after uh which something happened in my family um someone who's very close to me got uh, severely ill and that actually um shaked my uh my ground in such a way that i started wondering if life can turn around in a split second then what is it that actually drives me because deep down i can feel that it is not pedagogical science that um that i have to um that I have that I have to be the expert in in this world there's something else at play here that is really important for me and deep down i i always knew that was something in branding something in marketing so um by that time i was 22 years old i um i uh, just got out for for a year just to to relax um and i started a new study back then there was an economical crisis so i sent like 500 letters to all companies um, asking them uh, to hire me as a marketer, but everyone said no, of course, because I had no papers and no experience at all. Um, but I already was advising companies and I did it from out of my heart because I, I felt that I understood what branding uh, in its core was all about. So I'm still very lucky that I finally got offered a job in telemarketing. Uh, I had to call four for 40 hours a week um all companies in the netherlands um so not only in holland and i had to ask them uh, to buy um like two to three minute video formats at dutch television for an extremely high price um i turned out to be uh, very good in sales and um that moment that was where my career took off so i worked my way up to become a brand manager uh finally um 
after after a few years uh, being a brand manager i saw that that was actually i could help others with and that it is all about managing your brand well especially when you're in a, a, a highly competitive field and during my uh, my career throughout my career i've I spoke with so many entrepreneurs who have such amazing stories and I saw them in the end at television and the story that they told me when I spoke to them on the phone was nothing was nothing like what I saw on TV it was a big difference and I felt like uh, I really need to help others both uh, female and male entrepreneurs I don't really care about that uh, to help uh, to help them position themselves in such a way in this world that their customers will actually listen and to help them clarify their message and their story and their, and their value in this world. So that has been my journey so far. Well, thank you for sharing all very interesting stories and very diverse. And that is amazing. We have several questions, but we will go to that in a second. Okay. Um, now, talking specifically about challenges because of course we all have challenges when we're uh, being entrepreneurs but i feel like specifically for us as women there's some sort of uh specific challenges that that we might have due to our gender what do you think of this what have been your main challenges or your main challenge as your path has uh, developed Brie, can you start sharing this with us? Also, Oi, uh, she got disconnected. Okay, oh, here we go. There we go. One uh -huh. of the things for me, and then also something that I help pretty much every single client with is worth and charging their worth and charging their value, really. Um, I, I talk to a lot of women who and you know, I did this at, at the beginning of my business as well. Was really undercharging my value, thinking that people wouldn't wouldn't pay me for you know the services I was providing, or that um, you know what I had wasn't wasn't worth the amount of money that I needed to charge for it, right? And so you know, you look at say men who are doing very similar things; they have no problems stating right. their rates and stating them confidently and increasing their rates and charging all of the things that they need to charge for the services they're providing. And so one of the things that I now include in all of my coaching and have done for myself over the last six years as well is working through those value conversations in my head and those worth conversations and just those beliefs that we kind of have all been imbued with growing up that like, you know, money doesn't grow on trees or, you know, like all of the things that we're told and taught about money. And I was raised um, by an entrepreneur mom who told me that as an entrepreneur, you'll never take home a paycheck a day in your life. And so it took me, I mean, it took me eight years in business to really start making a profit. And it took me literally up until like, I just put myself on legitimate payroll um, a few months ago. And so it's definitely been a journey for me. And it's one that I see a lot of um, women struggling with, especially. Right. Yeah, I, I would agree on that. It's so difficult for us to 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 believe in ourselves. And it's so tragic sometimes. It's like you have all the answers and you have all the information. Why why aren't you able to to charge properly for what you know, right? So Dr. Hina, what do you think? What have been your challenges? Um, you know that I have been an entrepreneur myself and I'm coming from a very traditional country. India, none of you have visited, but if you will visit, you will know. Our greatest ambition, especially for women in India, is to get married to a good boy, and that's it. Okay. So the life begins and ends there. Nobody thinks of becoming an entrepreneur, and nobody is encouraged to become an entrepreneur. Women are always being taken care by. When I would be young, my father will take. So my father will tell me, don't worry, Hina, I'll take care of you. When I got married, my husband said, don't worry, I'm taking care of you. When I grow old, my son would say, don't worry, I'll take care of you. So in India, women are grown with the idea that somebody else will take care of them. So in such circumstances, 
becoming an entrepreneur is not a natural way of selecting a career it is a it is not expected in this society to become an entrepreneur hence automatically very few women are becoming entrepreneur in case if i share my experience i did my masters i wanted to do phd but i was in love with a man and i thought once i'll get married to him he will bring all the stars and moon for me so i decided to plunge into marriage thinking of not thinking of anything else and uh, um, it's been 35 years and i'm still waiting no stars and moons have come to my life <laughs> i'm still waiting so you can imagine what kind of thought process i had and i went into marriage in india if you get married it is not you are getting married to a man but you are getting married to a family family is expecting you to go to the house cook look after the family look after the in-laws do everything what is required in house and unlike with other countries in india we have hot breakfast we have hot lunch we have got hot dinner so you can imagine if a woman is into it she will be spending whole time in that i was expected to do that when i got married and that was my nightmare i said oh my goodness i don't want to live my life like that so i had a strong desire in my stomach that no i have to get out and i have to do something on my own so i told my husband that how do i go about my husband said you do whatever you want to do you know men so it is not that you know on behind a successful woman there was a man he said you do whatever you want to do i'm not there i was all alone to break my ceiling from a ordinary woman to become an entrepreneur so i told him what do i do he said you select your product i said oh my goodness where do i select the product that was the biggest challenge i had in during that time in the meantime he said you look after my marketing he was making poly pvc that is polyvinyl chloride material so i took that marketing of that product and i learned my entrepreneurial competencies during that journey and during marketing of my product i realized that government of india is is opening a big petrochemical plant and it was heard in the market that polypropylene will replace the pvc so i came and i told my husband that look your product is going to be replaced by one of the government product and polypropylene is going to be replaced will be replacing your product he said oh you are a girl you are a woman you do not know anything it's not going to be like that i am a technical person and i am going to do that see the challenges i am talking about to become an entrepreneur so i told him that no i knew the market you are in a production activity and i in a marketing activity i told him 100 times but he did not listen and whenever i go to market the my clients will say mrs shah have you got polypropylene mrs shah have you got polypropylene so i decided that okay if my husband is not agree i'll begin a polypropylene plan plan <laughs> wow that was my my experience to become an entrepreneur i never dreamt to become an entrepreneur i never wanted to become an entrepreneur but it happened wow and that was the time when i went to banks my environment the environmental support was not there when i bank right. went to bank they said we don't fund to women of course i said why and then he said no but i can't fund you because your husband has taken loan from my bank and in one family two people cannot get the loans so i told him i said okay i divorce him you give me the money as soon as you give me the money i'll get married to him again so you see, these are the threatening points in your life in india at that point of time Wow. so i did not take money from he i took money from somebody else and i began my plan and i did very well but there were two aspects 
one is at the social level at the at home level my mother in law was very very unhappy with me she said you are not yes. feeding my son properly you are not looking after the house in the meantime i had my baby so if my baby will cry they will say oh you are going to factory so your baby will cry so all those things were very very difficult to manage i was continuously living with the guilt so that was my experience to become entrepreneur but once i became even the market people when factory inspector will come for inspection in my factory he will say madam where is sir i want to talk to sir and not to madam wow i am the sir he said no they were not ready to even accept a woman in such condition i began my business and i did very well i think my husband joined me later saluting me that you have done a good job but that was the journey and during that time when i started developing women at this point of time today i am developing rural women in india is 60% rural areas women are not highly educated i am right. dealing with less educated women uneducated women illiterate women science and technical graduate women highly technical <laughs> women and they are all been trained in my institute and the challenges are these women hardly any woman has got desire to become successful entrepreneur right they want to become an entrepreneur but success and achievement is not the motives and that is why my job is very very challenging to arouse motivation in women arouse motivation in the family even today the family attitude and aptitude is same for women if my woman I, yes I, i i i'm sorry i think that what you're saying is very valuable because it's a uh, a uh, a mindset that needs to be changed yes. all over a country i mean oh my god that's so powerful it's not only you it's like a whole system that is blocking the way for women to be successful and that's that's terrible I that's mean, a it's, that's a it's, a, it's alarming of course it is a, a huge challenge of course yes. uh, mm -hmm. maria can can you tell us a little bit about your challenges yes um bri already gave the best summary ever about it that's <laughs> that has exactly been my challenge um the biggest challenge for me was actually finding determining and overcoming these unconscious beliefs about yourself and what it's like to be an entrepreneur i started my entrepreneurial journey when i was 27 years old and um i got um i got i got a job um a freelance job from out of my company brand density uh to teach for um Uh, the biggest educational institute in uh, Holland for uh, working professionals. I will never forget the day I first walked into a master class that I had to teach. The master class was about a media psychology. I walked in. Um, there were only senior marketing and brand professionals sitting at the table. I walked in. My heart was in my throat, and they were looking at me like. That must be the assistant. <laughs> I will never forget how that felt. Um, what I can also tell you is that that is the last day anyone ever looked at me that way because I knew that I had work to do. I knew that I had to change my whole attitude, my whole beliefs, because everything starts with your beliefs and the thoughts that you have, and you can manipulate that yourself by training yourself into it. And one of the things that I've been dealing with on every level in life, not because it's not just uh, it's not just a challenge in your entrepreneurial journey. It's mostly a challenge in your life. It also goes on your private in your private life. I'm a pleaser, um, and this has oh this has given me so much stress and work um, in my job uh, as a as a brand professional. Um, I 
I promise you A, but I want to give you A, B, C, and D. And why is that? Why do I, why do I always want to give you extra? It's, it's because I want to prove something. It's because I want to show you that I am worth being a 27-year-old entrepreneur, that I deserve a seat at the table. And it took me some time to actually realize that I don't have to prove anything at all. There is no one I have to prove anything to because I'm right here. And that took me a lot of time to actually learn that. And because of that unconscious belief, I didn't dare to charge money uh, either. So, uh, yeah, all these things happen, you know. Uh, you're, at, you're, at, you're sitting at the table with a prospect and the prospect is like, uh, uh, well, this is my budget and uh, I expect you to work with it. And I was just like, oh, okay, I, I felt right. I should be happy to get this job. No, 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 that's, that's the wrong attitude. I'm not just happy to get the job. You should be happy that I'm willing to work for you because I'm an expert and I know how many hard nights that I have suffered to get where I am today. If I look at, at my fellow peers, I was working, I was studying while they were partying and I deserve to get paid. I will never forget the, oh my God, my heartbeat went up when I had to say, uh, my uh, hourly my hourly rate is 65 euros. And I was like, oh, I want to hide under the table. I don't charge 65 euros anymore per hour because that's that's not enough money. That's that's not enough to make it as an entrepreneur and, and to actually grow, at least here in Holland, if you look at our economical state and uh, the costs, of course, that you have. Um, and of course, what you have actually have to offer. So um, summarize, Find, uh, determine your unconscious beliefs. What is it that holds you back? And one of the things that I actually would like to share here is the beliefs that you hold with you and that have brought you this far in your life are exactly the same beliefs that are withholding you from growing further. Yes. And that is something that I have to work on every day because every belief that I hold on to that has brought me to where I am today is exactly what is holding me back from going yes. on to the next level. And if you see that and you can tackle that, you can move on. Oh my God, those are so much powerful. Thank you for sharing that because it, it, it resonates with me to, you have no idea to what level. It is so true when sometimes you're afraid to tell people how much you charge for what you know you're worth and you're still like deciding whether to tell them or not, that that's horrible. And it's good to be conscien uh, conscious about that. So talking about uh, now um, about connections, of course we have had connections through our life that have propelled us forward or, or that have had some um, important, uh, changes who have created important changes in our lives how do you usually connect with other people uh, maybe could you share some tips on connecting um brie could you share something with us please yeah absolutely so um i will actually start by sharing something that i see people doing wrong in connecting and then transition us into the way that i connect and the way that i recommend people connect so um I actually, I hate the, the LinkedIn platform. And the reason I hate the LinkedIn platform is that people connect to get something from you. They reach out to get your business and, and it, they approach it from like the perspective, like the smoke screen of like, oh, I wanna give you something. I wanna give you a free session. I wanna give you a free opt-in. I wanna give you this, I wanna give you that. But it's with this underlying expectation that they're gonna get you as a client at the end of the day. And so there are far too many people out there um, connecting to get. And I can spot it right away. I can feel it, I can sense it, and I know it. And I will 100% tell them that I'm uninterested. And I have no qualms about telling people that the way that they are choosing to connect is a way that is unaligned and that is ingenuine. Um, for me, if I'm truly looking to connect with someone, I will give you a perfect example, actually. So um, in November, I was watching YouTube. Uh, I watched this, the spiritual channel of YouTube and they pull in videos from other YouTubers. 
and they feature them on their channel. And so I was watching this video of this woman I had never seen before in my life and just saw her energy, saw her enthusiasm, saw her like her, or like I could just see that she was like a beautiful human. And so I went on Facebook and I stalked her, right? <laughs> Looked her up and turns out she was in Manhattan as well. And I was like, oh my goodness, I need to know this girl. Like she's amazing. And so I literally just reached out to her and was like, this might be weird, but like I watched one of your videos and I think you're really cool. And like, I'm in Manhattan too. Do you want to go get lunch? Um, and we did, we got lunch in December and we just started this brilliant friendship and we, she came over for brunch in January. Um, she came to my co-working space with me in February. We both uh, spoke at an event together in March and went out for dinner afterwards and she just became a really great friend. Well, fast forward, um, I actually decided in April to leave Manhattan because of the COVID situation temporarily and uh, had, was texting with her one day and I was like, ha 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 ha, if you didn't have a boyfriend, you'd be coming with me. And she called me a week later and said, uh, were you serious? And so this woman that I just saw on YouTube that I reached out to genuinely connect with, now we've been living together for almost three months and have like really truly formed not just a friendship, but like a legitimate sisterhood. And, and I know this is different because you can't form that kind of connection with other people, but I share this just to say like, this is what's possible. And now she and I have not only become, you know, friends and sisters, but fierce champions of each other's businesses. And like oh. this amazing camaraderie has developed between us. And now we're both not going back to Manhattan and we're going to other corners of the United States. And I know that because we've connected to build a relationship like our connection isn't going anywhere and so i would encourage people when you are connecting don't try to connect with people to get something from them connect with them to build an authentic relationship and to literally give to their life which in return will give to your life but you can't start with the energy of getting it just doesn't work Right. Oh my God. That's such an amazing story. I can't believe you actually like live together and stuff. That's so, so cool. Like the lengths that connection will, will go to, right? That's amazing. That true, authentic, genuine connection will go to, right? And even Brenda, you and I got connected through a mutual friend. We, this is the first time we've met I and know. I've already told you, like you, you must come to Tulsa to visit. The <laughs> friend like, my home is open to you and I don't even know you, right? Like that's the, that's the level of connection that really moves mountains in the world. And I think it's a level of connection that's missing right now. I agree. This is a lovely story. Thank you for sharing. Cause I believe in everything you just said. I think that like genuine connections are what will move the world forward. I mean, there's no other way, right? So Dr. Hina, what can you tell us about connecting? How do you connect usually with other women or people? I see in my work, entrepreneurship is not in isolation. So I have to connect with a lot of people. And the beginning to begin with to my clients, if I'm selling something, my product has to be introduced to my clients. So I, I make the connection by explaining it and by taking their trust in me. Right. And that has worked extremely well. And when that client could be the, the people whom I'm selling my product or people who are sitting in the banks, even the bankers have to have a lot of trust in me. So I developed the connection by creating connectivity between trust and appreciation. So that yes. has worked extremely well. And also I would say I have got very good connection with my all stakeholders, like the government officials, like the legal officials. I did not ignore anything. And I just felt that as an entrepreneur, it is very, very important to have the network of the connection at market, at purchasing level, at the finance level, at the friends level. And right. also with your own workers, because otherwise uh, you face a lot of problem. And last but not the least, I made very good connection with my husband as well as with my children. So I made sure that my husband should not get any threat of me. I always remain wife 
and I always remain mother and I made them trust me that I am a mother and wife first and then the businesswoman. So I got very good connections from them. My I am sure you are an excellent connector because you know so many people at so many places. I am certain that you are like a pro at connecting with everybody. I am sure of that. There this is, is amazing. Experience, you know? There is no other way, right? Yes. Of course. And Marieke, tell us about your experience with connections. Um, I, um, I think I, I, I truly believe in the power of reciprocity. You should um, give first without expecting something in return. That is very important. Without respect, without expecting something in return, give it because you love what you do. And uh, this is what I do all the time. Uh, I give advice without anyone asking for it. I'm just too enthusiastic about it. I just want to share it. And that, that is what people makes, uh, uh, that's what, what um, makes people enthusiastic about you. Um, I think um, in, in um, networking, uh, in connecting, uh, knowing your personal brand is really important. You should always find out what is actually fascinating about you. Um, and there's a tip I can give everyone about that. There, uh, there has been uh, a book written about it. It's uh, written by Sally Hogshead, and um, it's called uh, Fascinate. Um, and knowing what actually makes you fascinating to others helps you to connect. And uh, for me, that is always being um, unapologetically myself. I really need to share my thoughts and, and my advice in my own energy. And um, that is what I always see, um, in, like for example, in reviews, people always refer to my energy. And that is, I think, the brand essence of my own personal identity. And I would encourage everyone to find theirs. What is it that makes you fascinating? And not only how you see yourself, it's about how the world sees you. And if you right. use that to your advantage, um, that, that becomes your trademark. And let me just say that everyone is fascinating. There has been a lot of scientific research done after this, and everyone has their own fascination power. And uh, <laughs> if you know how to practice it, you can connect more easily because it has um, it has propelled me forward um, in a very um, very good way. Because when I started my career as an uh, uh, as an entrepreneur and as a brand strategist, um, there was a, a client from from years back when I was still in telemarketing, and he knew me. He was a lawyer, and when he heard of my plans to start my own company, he immediately said. I've always been so thankful for your advice. Um, let me help you. And that is how I got into uh, one of Holland's best notary offices to get my paperwork done for my, for my company. And that is how, how that works for you. That always, um, that's always a result of the power of reciprocity. Start with giving and do it with love. Don't do it right. in mind with, I know that one in so many will give me something in return. Right. Just do it because you actually believe in it. Because you genuinely want to give. Yes. And that's it. I, I yeah. love that the, the, fasci the fascinating power, that the fascination power. How did you call it? Uh, the book is called Fascinate by Sally Hogshead. Um, right. I'm not an affiliate or anything. I just want to. <laughs> no. But, um, I, I loved your, your fascinating power or something like that you mentioned. I, it, it sounds pretty amazing. Yeah, and now just advantages that everyone has their own uh, fascination advantages and if you find out what they are then you can use them to your advantages like for example some people have the power of mystique in them other ha others have the power of passion and others have the power of uh, prestige in them and all are okay all are fine but you just know how, you just need to know how to practice it so people actually will, will listen to your message right I agree. And let's try. Um, I would like to know, how do you see the women entrepreneurial ecosystem like in the future, uh, especially talking about like this digitally connected world? How do you see us women like in the near future uh, connecting and being uh, in entrepreneurships and stuff? 
Uh, Brie, can you share with us, please? Yeah, absolutely. So it's so funny. I was reading some articles back at the end of 2019 about like, you know, the projected business trends that were coming up for 2020 and all of this stuff. And in every single article I read, every single one said women in business is like a key trend for 2020. And I think it's been really true because you so many people right now are being hit with the inability to have a workplace or the inability to go back to a job or, um, you know, there's so many things that have been hitting, especially women and um, also minorities in the last three to four months. And so I really truly think that now is a time for women to really be on the rise in entrepreneurship. Not that it hasn't been, but I feel like this is a really pivotal moment for us. And, you know, I really truly believe that the way to do that is through collaboration and helping each other out because the, the business um, kind of MO up and up to this point has been competition. And I've known for several years that competition is not how one, it's not how women work. It is not how we thrive. It is not how we succeed. That is how it was when it was, you know, the the man's world in business. Like we are shifting into this new opportunity, and the way that we succeed is by coming together. And so it is that it is building those connections. It is building those collaborations, right? For example, the woman that I connected with on YouTube that I'm currently living with, um, you know, I have re I just recommended her to be on someone else's podcast. I had her on my podcast. She just recommended me to partner with this other company to be their coach, right? Like, so right. there's so many opportunities that come from us working together. And one of the, the mottos that I've lived by since about 2015 is that the rising tide raises all ships. And so when I succeed and I can help you succeed, then we all succeed. And that I think is the biggest trend and biggest opportunity that as women in business we have right now. Amazing. I love collaboration. I agree with you. This, this is the way for us to go forth. Uh, Dr. Hina, can you tell us about what do you see as women entrepreneur in this digital ecosystem? Well, I would like to say that now women have created their own space. It is not very difficult for women to become entrepreneur. I mean, we are listening to so many successful entrepreneurs. Secondly, in India, the government policies are also very much there for women. There are various financial schemes. There are various financial support is available. In India, with this population, we have got a huge market. Right. So, but this digital world has made the women's entrepreneurial capability much easier because we are digitally connected. I don't have to travel somewhere to sell my product. Right. Uh, Amazon is there, the big market is there, the big market is there, whether it is food processing, whether it is textile industry, electronics industries, it is very easy to sell in the digitally connected world. And I can sell in Mexico, I can sell in Netherlands. Now those boundaries, those passport, those visas are not required. I would say all women should be plunged into becoming an entrepreneur in this digital world. Yes, I agree. I agree. Let us all become entrepreneurs and be very successful. <laughs> and Marieke, what can you tell us from your point of view about this subject? Uh, well, I think that uh, through the digitalization, um, becoming an entrepreneur has become more approachable for a woman. Um, it, it has become easier. You can literally start a, a business uh, for like one euro. Yeah? You, you go to a notary office, you open, you open up. Uh, your company, you can just get started. Um, I see uh, that there are many um, female groups that are willing to help each other up, as uh, Brie also illustrated. Um, and there are other female entrepreneurs that see uh, that others are working on their own game and everyone is manifesting their own lane, but still we can help each other up. There's, it's not a matter of competition, it's about helping each other further. And I still see a lot of competition, unfortunately. Um, I think that um, the digitalization has, has made it much easier. And I think that it 
um, that that gets noticed because um, what I see is also that because of the digital platforms that we have nowadays, there is a much more stage for female entrepreneurship. Um, and you can see that, for example, in the messages that are on your feed on LinkedIn, that there are successful female entrepreneurs who actually get um, have messages that get tons of likes and, and responses. And so new role models also pop up. The, the whole digital ecosystem um, gives us a platform to step up as a role model and to lead others to become an entrepreneur. Yes, and, I and agree. That's serious. Hmm. Yes, and it, it is so amazing that nowadays we can get a hold of all of these other amazing women all over the world. If, if, if it not were for this digital world, how would we here to the, today, how would we, we have ever met? You know, it would have yeah. been very hard for us to find each other. And right now I feel so grateful to, to be sharing this space in time with you because it is amazing to be able to, to tell each other um, our stories and to share, right? So uh, right now, what do you say we start with some questions? Maybe there might be some questions from uh, the audience. I don't know. Uh, hold on a second. Let me just check here. Okay, there's one. Let me. This is for Dr. Hina Shah. What steps should women who are working from home due to COVID take to protect their boutique businesses and more of luxury goods when the market is very stagnant? in this sector now? Uh, yes, that is the biggest question. But then so many women, suppose I give an example, those who were in textile businesses, they have shifted their product to make the masks. So at this point of time, uh, those small women entrepreneurs need to look into the market and find out the new opportunities we are existing at this point of time, like offering some food, our few entrepreneurs have shifted from, from their actual electronics business to catering business because the vegetables and fruits are not available in those areas. So entrepreneurial shifting is very, very important. And that is where we may we say that entrepreneurs are very flexible. They always act upon the whatever opportunities are arise. But COVID and this situation is definitely a threat to any entrepreneur to earn money. Right. Yes, it is. Uh, there's another question here for the three of you girls. Uh, what is the role of skilled education in entrepreneurship? Who would like to take it first? Could you repeat the question again? Yes. What is the role of skilled education in entrepreneurship? So I can start, and I don't, I don't know if I know exactly where you're coming from. So if I'm off base, you can correct me in the live chat. But sure. um, you know, I believe that our our skill set is important in the beginning of our business, right? Like we we need to have a skill in order to start a business. Right. Um, what happens with a lot of people is they almost get like trapped within that skill and forget about developing themselves as an entrepreneur as well, right? So there's this brilliant book out there called The E-Myth. Um, I unfortunately don't remember the guy who wrote it, but if you look it up, it's The E-Myth, The Entrepreneurial Myth. And uh, he talks about so much how so many people get trapped working in their business rather right. than working on their business. And so the skill set is the working in your business thing, right? So his example is a pie maker. So a pie maker that's making pies all day, every day. But you also have to look at working on your business. So working on your marketing, working on your branding, working on your books, working on all of the back end stuff that makes your business successful. Because if you just choose to only do your skill set, you might as well work for someone else. Because in entrepreneurship, you you're taking on a lot of responsibility basically to just stay in your lane. Entrepreneurship is so, 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 so much bigger than that skill set. And I will also say that in order to truly like scale and grow your business, you end up outsourcing that part of that skill set part of your business because at, at the end of the day, 
that becomes the bottleneck in your business. So for me in coaching, I have actually started bringing on additional coaches underneath me because if I spend all of my time coaching, then I cannot grow and scale my business because my time, my energy, and my um, just my my day to day activities are severely limited. So it is important, and there is also another side of the coin that needs to be taken into consideration. I agree. Yeah. So we, we we cannot stay like just focused on on the skill set, but to be able to to see the whole entrepreneur ship uh, as uh, you have to be like the one taking the lead on all of these different areas right mm -hmm. right maria were you gonna say something yes i just wanted to add that there's a big difference between entrepreneurial and being an entrepreneur uh, many entrepreneurs are in fact artists as Bree just said, they're very good at what they do. They have their own profession. And in fact, they are not an entrepreneur. They are, they are a skilled artist and they focus all their attention on what they have to, on what they have to offer. Um, I also see that there are many courses on uh, entrepreneurship um, and uh, those are very valuable too. But I think that if you want to be an entrepreneur, you should also realize that uh, the entrepreneurship is uh, the biggest accelerator of your personal development you can ever imagine because you get a mirror straight in your face every day. Uh, you have to, um, the number one skill uh, for entrepreneurship, if you ask me, would be self-reflection. You should be able to reflect on yourself, on your behavior, on your thought patterns, um, on, on how you act in order to grow. And that is something that um, uh, a, a good business coach can help you with, of course, but there's also a lot that you ha just have to uh, experience yourself. Um, so, right. yeah, education, it is important to... Um, to, to, to have an education, of course, and to have something to offer because you need to put something to the table. But many things will also be learned in practice. Like, for example, I studied pedagogical science. I switched to marketing. And everything I do nowadays, uh, I didn't learn anything from school. I did it myself. I found it out myself. And uh, coming back to the point where we just were talking about, the, the digitally connected world, all you want to know, it is all online. I find that such a great gift. Everything you want to know, every book there is, it is all on the internet. And that gives us such such an easy way to start our business. It is only right. there. So I think that that can only clarify that it is about you as an entrepreneur um, next to, uh, of course, your skill set. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. There's another question, very interesting question that says, ah, sorry, Dr. Hina, you were going to say something. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I just thought that I'll just share with you that role of skills and knowledge is very, very important in entrepreneurial career because if you are a self-employed, then entrepreneurial, the technical skill is important. But if you are an entrepreneur, if you are employing a few number of people, then you need to have the skills, competency that is behavioral skills that is called goal setting, information seeking, problem solving ability, initiative right. taking, self-confidence and knowledge with regards to product, market, finance, finance management, marketing management and so on. So very often we have seen that we, so many women have failed because we are only we are talking about the successful but most of the women have failed those who do not have the proper marketing knowledge and finance management ability along with entrepreneurial skills also say goal setting and etc this is just a small comment for you yeah no i agree i agree thank you thank you um just i think we have time for one more quick question uh in your experience what have you have you been close to universities to advance as female entrepreneurs Could, would you recommend it and you're all role models for us, says Lumi. So, uh, Brie, would you like to start by answering this? Yeah, I have not worked with, uh, sorry, with universities to like in entrepreneurship programs. I'm not averse to it. It just has not been a part of my a thing yet. Uh, but what I will say is, 
I typically every summer, this summer is an exception, uh, bring on a team of interns to get school credit from universities to mentor and um, bring them into the business, show them everything that goes into being an entrepreneur, help them kind of understand that. So I, I've done it less on a like bigger scale university, although I, I do have to say I'm, I'm probably, so I'm moving to Tulsa uh, in five weeks and uh, looking at getting more involved in the community there uh, because Tulsa was actually named the top city for female entrepreneurs in 2016 in the United States. Yay. And so I am looking at really kind of helping that grow and helping there be more female entrepreneurs, especially in that area and that kind of like, you know, landlocked area of the United States. Nice, lucky Tulsa, nice. Uh, would anyone else would like to share about universities? Yes, Dr. Hina? Uh, I very strongly believe that entrepreneurial education is very, very important to make a successful entrepreneur in the country. Because entrepreneurship is not very simple. It is very complicated. It is very dynamic because every day the opportunities are changing. They should be able to ready to take those opportunities. So I have been involved in uh, developing faculty members, that is the professors of 120 engineering colleges in India, where every year I teach number of faculty members to teach entrepreneurship in their, their universities and colleges. And also I am uh, facilitating uh, those uh, uh, incubators who are entrepreneurial incubators who are being established in majority of our education institution because whole pro whole process is to make more entrepreneurs in the country so i would say that entrepreneurial education becomes very very important in the countries like us where unemployment is very high i would also like to share with you that i'm running a school and i'm teaching entrepreneurship from standard one to standard ten and our teachers are also teaching entrepreneurs so we would really look forward to have large number of entrepreneurs coming up in the society so our unemployment rate can go down amazing thank you uh and this is a very interesting question do you girls have a uh a, are you a part of any women network or not and if so do you think this is helpful uh, Marieke, would you like to start sharing this? Um, I'm part of uh, several networks, but not a female-only network. No. Okay. And I do that on purpose, and I truly believe that female networks can really be helpful for some entrepreneurs. But um, being a woman and knowing what um, what uh, challenges that might bring, um, I think that we should blend in. So I rather be there where men and women come together and take a stand um, next to, of course, helping other women succeed. I think that is, I think that's a job for every female entrepreneur, see how you can help other uh, females step up their game. So yes. I, um, I just choose to be in networks that are not female only. I like to blend in where uh, it, it's about showing the people who still don't understand that we are equals that we actually are and i think that we can only do so by being present i love your answer very powerful thank you uh breed are you a part of a network um kind of but no i'm not very active in it um i will say i used to run one that was incredible in los angeles um unfortunately closed it several years ago um but in relation to this there's actually a question in the chat that i do want to just touch on quickly and it's how important is it to have a strong network to start a new business and is it is not having a strong network a disadvantage. So I would say it's very important because you cannot build a business alone. You just can't do it. And the people that have been around me in my journey have been so pivotal to helping me get where I am. Uh, but the other, the caveat I will say to that is the, the person that asked this, her, uh, the title says student. And so what I would say is do not wait to start building your network until you have your business start now and the brilliant opportunity that we all have right now is that everything's digital right we're coming to you from literally 
four different points in the world, like just this panel alone, imagine what you can do on LinkedIn or on Facebook or on Instagram. So right. start building your network now. You don't have to necessarily join a, join a group if you wanna join a group, but like you can build your own network powerfully just by being you and reaching out and establishing those, like we talked about earlier, authentic connections with people. Thank you so much for sharing that. And there's so much truth. You cannot wait to build a network. Your network has to be built day by day with every single person you encounter. Just to, uh, enjoy the process of getting to know all the people around you and be sure to gather as much information as you can and make friends and enjoy the process. And I don't know, I just love connecting with people. <laughs> uh, I think our time is up. This has gone super fast. Is there something specific uh, any one of you uh, would like to add? Mm, no, Marieke, <laughs> I think you were gonna say something. I was just, I was just thinking, well, I was like, no, I think that I shared everything that I found really, really important. I think that one of the things that we already pointed out is that, um, that when you become an entrepreneur, um, just realize how important it is to know how to run a company tactically, that you understand the numbers in your business and that you understand every part of it. Because one of the advices I got, which I found uh, find a bad advice, was uh, if you're not good at it, find someone else who can do it for you. Like for example, accountancy, I am like not good with numbers know your numbers if you don't know your numbers if you don't know your the story your numbers are telling you cannot grow and if you want to succeed as a female entrepreneur i think it is very important to know your numbers and of course i still have an accountant who does most of the job but i know accountancy now i know what what story my numbers tell and i know that i am not just having um, an administration sheet that says like these are my orders and this is the money i made this month no i actually have some um critical prestation indicators i have um i'm pursuing um the profit and not just um the number of uh, of orders i get every month so make sure that you understand entrepreneurship i think as dr hina said uh, understanding what entrepreneurship is about is so important education about this topic is super important and um, don't underestimate that when you start your entrepreneurial journey thank you thank you so much for sharing uh brie would you like to make a closing statement dr hina yeah, I would just yes. say... Um, I would like to say that if, uh, becoming an entrepreneur is... Uh, I would I, I would ask every woman to become an entrepreneur because she can enjoy the flexibility work at her own, her own time. You can have the family, you can have the children. You enjoy that once you have become an entrepreneur. You have got more spare time. You can really create your own environment because you are, an, you are an, right. an create something from scratch, meet new people, build a team, create a job for others, help others, become an expert, invest in yourself, make money, save tax, uh, tax and give power to others. And therefore I would say that women should become the entrepreneurs so they can give this legacy to their second generation. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing today. Bree? Uh, and just to wrap us up, I would say if you are feeling that inkling, if you are feeling that pull or that inspiration to be an entrepreneur, my invitation for you would be to follow that. And because what's going to happen immediately when you think like, oh, I want to be an entrepreneur, you're an instantaneously going to have the secondary voice that says that's a terrible idea. Don't do that. Here's all the reasons you should not do that. Right. And if I can be a um, an encouraging voice in your life to say, if you're having that inkling, that intuitive hit, please, 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 please follow it. There is a reason you are being called towards this. You may not know what it is yet. I thought I knew what it was at 26. I definitely didn't. It is definitely, uh, or actually even 23, I guess. It's definitely <laughs> unfolded, but 
just trust that and allow yourself to walk down that path. And then the last thing I'll say too is that entrepreneurship is not necessarily a destination. It is like Marike uh, mentioned, like a day by day journey as well. So just know that sometimes your first idea is not your best idea, but if you have that call to be an entrepreneur, just keep following that instinct and you will be guided towards the right destination. Yes, yes, I totally agree. I want to thank you deeply for all your time. This has been very enriching for all of us. Uh, for all of you watching here, please be sure to follow these amazing ladies on their different uh, social networks and write to them and ask them questions. And you can see they are full of amazing information and knowledge. Uh, remember, we're having a networking session right after this. If you want to stay here, you are more than welcome to. And I deeply, uh, in name of Arbalest Learning and Speedy Connections, I want to thank you all for being here today. This has been amazing. Thank you. Thank you, too, for hosting thank this. You. you did a good job. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you all. See you. Bye. Bye.